Here's Jason in Montreal with an email. Uh, do you have any exposure to European equities? If so, which stock would you recommend based on your overall theme for a strong consumer? Okay, so looking through our lens, we started to see deteriorating breadth in the European markets. In other words, the percentage of stocks performing well started to deteriorate in April. Europe was one of the first regions globally to experience that deterioration. So when that happens for us, it means we stop making any new investments in that bucket. Second, we tighten up the stop losses, and to the extent we get stopped out, we stop putting on new positions. So we have very low exposure to Europe because that has been going through correction now for four or five months. Uh, and at this point, we're not adding anything there. So some small individual positions, uh, but not much exposure to speak of. Uh, like a Unilever, or uh, can you give us some names? Uh, well, uh, we have uh, a couple of technology companies uh, because, of course, uh, European companies are working at adding productivity, uh, and some of the big global technology companies are benefiting there because of the weak euro. Is one of your holdings uh, ARM holdings or no? We do not have no. ARM holdings currently. But you won't give us a European name? <laughs> You'd rather not? <laughs> I'd rather not. All right, fair enough. Henry's in Hamilton. Hi, Henry. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, what do you think of growth stocks going forward and Celgene, which keeps bouncing off of 103, 104 in particular? Okay. And Mark, what's the analyst coverage on this one? Thank you. Be well. Thanks, Henry. Hi, Henry. So uh, this is a, a great conversation to have right now because, of course, the biotechs have been getting, you know, creamed over the last four or five days. And one of the things you, you, you recognize is that when you go through a correction, you know, the weaklings get hit at the beginning. And as a sell-off picks up steam, it impacts more and more securities until in the very late stages of a decline, uh, investors are looking for anything that they can sell, that they can take profits in, uh, and often the strongest stocks get hit at the end. So we know that the biotechs have been under severe pressure. This has been one of the best parts of the market for the last three years. It's been an area we've been significantly invested in. Um, and it also happens to be one part of the market that is really dominated by the ETFs. A lot of investors use the ETF IBB, XBI, to invest in this area. So uh, a lot of, uh, I think, retail investors have been selling the biotechs, and I understand their, their concerns. Um, but the biggest and best companies get impacted the same way as the most expensive small speculative stocks when that takes place. So companies like Celgene and Gilead and Biogenetic have been negatively impacted in this sell-off. And while it's not my job to pick bottoms, and we try not to do that, we like to see a turn, I think that investors should be looking hard at the big names in this sector because the growth is not going away. Politically, there's some discussion from Hillary uh, on price, drug pricing. Uh, but the thing is, this group uh, likely will have a very good turn as the market starts to improve. So I prefer Gilead as one to look at. It's trading at about eight times earnings. Uh, it's got free cash flow of north of 12%. Um, but uh, Celgene is another name that you could look at in this group. I'd wait to see them start to turn, however, before I dip my toe in. Okay, we'll take a look at Gilead while I uh, tell you about the analyst coverage here on Celgene. You've got 19 buys, four holds, one sell. The uh, target price is 150. That's for a sell gene. We're looking at uh, Gilead here uh, and uh, getting hit uh, recently, as David was alluding to, but he still likes the, the company. Ray's in uh, Burlington. Hi, Ray. Hi, Ray. Go ahead in Burlington. Okay, uh, CGI Group. Okay, so uh, the three core sectors that we have our biggest exposures to are consumer discretionary, uh, financials, and technology. And within technology, one of the groups we really like are the services companies. Um, so uh, CGI, we do have a small position in, uh, but there are, there are others. Um, CGI's done a great job with the acquisitions that they've made. They're growing nicely in the US. Um, companies are spending money, as I mentioned earlier, on productivity. Uh, stocks pulled back, uh, but it has not broken long-term trend. Uh, I have no problem with the stock. And uh, we're looking at a longer-term chart here. So. Uh, you say pick it up here because it's, it's a healthy correction so, from so, higher levels? So keep in mind, everything I'm going to say today is in the very short run, yes, we're going to continue to see some volatility in this mm -hmm. market. Market's going to dominate. But these are names you should be looking at as you see this market start to turn. It looks like it's come back to its underlying trend line, uh, CGI. Yeah. Okay, Joe's in uh, Toronto. Hi, Joe. Go ahead. Taking my call. Um, my uh, question is on Gold Corp. Um, I know they're trading at around a 52-week uh, low. And um, I'm looking to acquire for a three to five year hold. 
And I'd like to get your opinion on uh, Gold Corp uh, as one of the larger uh, um, miners in Canada and uh, your opinion on gold in, in general over the next okay. three to five years. Okay. Thanks very much and have a wonderful day. Thanks, Joe. So, Joe, let's start with the, the big picture. Uh, the big picture, we believe, is that stocks in developed economies are likely to see multiple expansion over the next number of years as money rotates back to that asset class. In the period between 2000 and 2012, money was leaving developed markets and finding its way into emerging markets and commodities and so on. And there was a lot of overbuilding in the commodity sector. So we think that, first of all, the long-term picture for commodities is a relative underperformer to, uh, to equities as a whole. Uh, and of course, the equities of the commodities producers probably likely to continue to be weak. There will be short-term trading rallies, as there have been over the last couple of years. But we're probably only two to three years into what is likely a 10-year period of underperformance. So uh, if you're a short-term trader and you like to pick bottoms, you know, Gold Corp is, a, is fine as a, as a gold stock. I just don't think you need any gold stocks in your portfolio. And now this isn't new. It's a view that we've had for a couple of years. And, uh, you know, virtually every time it hit a new low, it was the wrong time to be a buyer. Here we are again at lows. Right. Uh, unless you're a very agile trader and you've got a very high risk tolerance, I don't see any reason to be there. There's other sectors that have a secular tailwind as opposed to a headwind, so I'd stay away. And David, just quickly here, uh, there are a lot of people, uh, Carl Icahn, the latest with this video, pointing to various indicators saying this is so much like 2000, so much like 2007, and other periods where we saw peaks in the market. Uh, refute that argument. Okay. So uh, let's first of all talk about uh, comparing to 2007, 8. I've had lots of people say, what if we have another 2008? 2008 was a once in a generation experience. Okay, it happened in 1929, 45 years later, or a generation of investors, 1974, 45 years later, 2008, 9. Okay? To get to that point, you have to have tremendous leverage in the system because there's two pieces to a bear market. First of all, there's sell off and correction, and then forced liquidation is the second leg when there's too much debt. So, for instance, in 2008, the financial services companies were levered up 40 to 1. Today, they aren't anywhere near that. They're not able to carry big financial positions. So the forced liquidation is highly unlikely. There just isn't the leverage in the system to cause a credit crisis in that way. And there's no indication in the market that that's the case, mm -hmm. right? So uh, I don't think that that's likely. Um, when you look at significant bear markets, of all of the 20% corrections going back to 1980, mm. there's one that happened without a recession, and that was 1987's crash. There's no indication of recession at this point. In 1987, long bond had gone from 7% to 10%, and stocks had gone up straight up 30% right into the crash. Mm. That's not the condition we have today. So I think 10 15% is what you should expect, and it'll be over quicker than you know. Okay, David, and we'll uh, pick up on your ideas as we go uh, throughout the show. We'll take a break and get back to questions after this.